Hello coders, Synthetic Programming here with another video for you guys today and today we are going to be diving into the world of secret investigation. So put on your tinfoil hats in any sort of style that you choose and together we are going to try to find out who is Satoshi Nakamoto, the inventor or inventors of Bitcoin. So for some background guys, yesterday I was thinking about an interesting video I could make for you guys. I decided so many people have tried to figure out who this guy is. Maybe I'll try my hand at it, spend a couple hours just for fun. Uh, I'm not saying that this theory is correct, but it is a theory nonetheless. And I figured you guys might enjoy too here my little theory that I came up with yesterday in a few hours. Uh, remember, there are people who have been investigating this for years, so they are probably a lot more knowledgeable uh, and know a lot more than I do. So let's uh, let's get right into it. Anyway, so uh, again, just a theory. Please don't contact anyone from inside this video, uh, any of the names, and ask questions. Don't harass anyone, like this is just for fun, and uh, let's keep it that way. So, what we know about Bitcoin is that in 2007, the code for Bitcoin blockchain is written. November of 2008, Satoshi Nakamoto, this fake name, uh, you know, alias, publishes Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. That's the original white paper. January 3rd, 2009, the first block of Bitcoin is mined with the message, the Times... 3rd of January 2009, Chancellor on Brink of Second Bailout for Banks. Now, this message is the title of an article in the London Times, and that becomes important later because the UK pops up here a lot. Satoshi remains involved in the Bitcoin community forums for two years and then passes leadership to Gavin Anderson. Over the time that he is in the forums, he makes about 500 posts. Satoshi Nakamoto, I mean. In spring of 2011, uh, Satoshi leaves a final message saying Bitcoin is in good hands and he has moved on to other things, while in reality, I don't think he has moved on. So here are the original sort of like usual suspects. Uh, these are the names that always keep popping up. These guys all know each other. Uh, they all had connections to each other. Two of them, unfortunately, are deceased. David Kleeman and Hal Finney. Uh, Nick Sabo, who is in the bottom left, he claims not to be Satoshi Nakamoto. Dorian Prentice Satoshi Nakamoto, whose birth name is literally the same name as the alias, also claims not to be. And I agree. I like. I believe it. I think that that really uh, whoever did call themselves Satoshi Nakamoto uh, was just trying to use this guy's name as a cover up. Um, and then there's Craig Wright, uh, who is in the bottom middle, and he claims to be Satoshi Nakamoto still to this day. But I don't think he is, and I'm not alone. A lot of people, I think the vast majority of people think that he's lying, uh, that it's some sort of a hoax, that he is just trying to get the attention or the fame or the credibility, who knows, uh, I'm not sure. He's actually suing a couple of the uh, other suspects of interest because, uh, you know, they say he's not. Uh, other people on this list have said that is not Satoshi Nakamoto, and he does not like that very much, so he is suing them for defamation. I do not think that Craig Wright is Satoshi Nakamoto. I do, however, think that Satoshi Nakamoto is a guy named Dr. Adam Back. That's my top suspect, and in this video I'm going to give you my theory on why Dr. Adam Back is Satoshi Nakamoto. So Dr. Adam Back was born July 1970, 50 years old about now, and, and he was born in London, England, UK, okay? So again, he's born in the UK. Computer science PhD from the University of Exeter. Again, this is a university that is in the UK. He's a cryptographer, and he invented Hashcash, which was a proof-of-work system that was used by several anti-spam systems uh, back in the day. And a similar system is used in Bitcoin. Pretty much the, the same system is used for the transactions of Bitcoin and for the mining. Uh, to see who is doing, you know, it, it tells who's doing the work, right? So, it's interesting that this guy, he is from the UK, and in the source code of Bitcoin, there's a lot of comments that say things like bloody hard. Uh, these are phrases that would not be used uh, in most parts of the world, but maybe in the Commonwealth, and especially the UK. How do we know that it's the UK and not Australia? Well, a guy named Stefan Thomas he actually graphed the timestamps of all the 500 posts that Satoshi Nakamoto made on the forums and found that there were no posts made between midnight and 6 or 7 a.m. for this time zone zero, Greenwich Standard Time, right? Or Greenwich Median Time, I think? I'm not sure exactly what the time zone is called, but it is the time zone that the UK lies in. Uh, so it seems increasingly like whoever Satoshi Nakamoto was, when they created Bitcoin and for the next two years afterwards, were in 
the UK, or at least living in the UK. So Adam Back has a website, and if you go on Dr. Adam Back's website, you'll see that there's some encryption stuff, some PGP keys, a Bitcoin address, Twitter handle, a Bitcoin talk handle, that kind of stuff. So if you keep scrolling down, you'll notice a section called Bitcoin Related. And in Bitcoin Related, I want you to pay attention to that third bullet point. Cache of Satoshi Nakamoto's Wikipedia page, which the editors deleted with two question marks. Those two question marks are significant to me because when editing HTML or your website, you know, if it was a typo, you can erase it. Two question marks next to each other on purpose like that suggests astonishment. Uh, he wants to show people, I'm astonished that the, you know, this page was deleted, right? Why was it deleted? I don't understand. That's what those two question marks sort of suggest. If you click through that link, it comes to this, a page which actually describes that the page wasn't exactly deleted. It was just merged with the Bitcoin page. So the information on Satoshi Nakamoto was still there. It was just under the Bitcoin Wikipedia page not under its own page. Regardless, this really bothered Dr. Adam Back, who writes, Wikipedia editors have seen fit to delete Nakamoto's page and merge it with the Bitcoin page. Personally, I find that discourteous, right? So personally, I find that discourteous is interesting wording. It suggests that Dr. Adam Back feels like a personal attack has been done against himself. So I am putting up this cache of what used to be on the page, and I urge anyone with Wikipedia involvement to push for its reinstatement. Bitcoin is the hottest new development on the internet this decade, and the man who did it gets deleted from Wikipedia, seemingly largely because he's using a pen name and not so much is known biographically. Uh, the works of the mind are 90% of your experience on the internet, so it cannot diminish recognition of the technical accomplishment that the author chose to use a nom de plume and not reveal his true name. Focus on a couple statements here. One, that he says, personally, I find that discourteous. And two, that he says, the works of the mind. Because works of the mind, uh, mind is a pretty interesting motif in this theory. If you read down those bullet points, you'll notice one that doesn't fit with the rest of them. And a search for news, who is Satoshi Nakamoto and web search, will show the press has amused themselves greatly trying to guess who Nakamoto could be. So looking at this, I see something interesting. Amused themselves greatly is an interesting way to phrase that. Uh, it suggests a grandiose sense of self. When someone says amused themselves greatly, referring to other people, um, you know, he's, he's suggesting that these reporters, the press, are amusing themselves because they don't know something or they're not smart. You know what I mean? When, when you say amused themselves greatly, uh, in that way, it kind of suggests a connotation that's like, hey, I know something you don't. That's what I read out of it. Uh, I might be totally wrong. I'm just saying that's what I got from it. If you look at Adam Back's Twitter, here he says, nice piece by Twitter handle on not hunting Satoshi. People should stop searching. Nothing good can come of it. Who is Satoshi Nakamoto is better left rhetorical, like who is John Galt? So, who is John Galt? John Galt is a character in Atlas Shrugged, and although he's not identified by name until the, you know, the last third of the book, he's the object of its often repeated question, who is John Galt? So the characters in the book wonder, who is John Galt? And of the quest to discover the answer. Also in the later part, it becomes clear that Galt has been present in the book's plot all along, playing several important roles, though not identified by name. Now, this John Galt character reminds me a lot of the Satoshi Nakamoto character himself. They're not the same, they stand for different technological things per se, but their ideals and their philosophies seem to be pretty similar, right? Um, you know, decentralized sort of, sort of, you know, system of capitalism where people have individuality. It just, it seems like it models Bitcoin. As the plot unfolds, Galt is acknowledged to be a philosopher and inventor, okay? So, you know, Galt thinks of himself or is revealed to be a philosopher and an inventor, and he believes in the power and glory of the human mind. Remember that the work of the mind is 90% of your presence on the internet. So the use of the word mind is interesting there. 
uh, and the rights of individuals to use their minds solely for themselves. So you see mind pop up here and there, right? When talking about John Galt and in the writing of Mr. Adam Back, Dr. Adam Back, I apologize. Uh, here another Twitter uh, feed, you can see John McAfee uh, brags about drinking and doing drugs. Again, weird flex, but okay. But Adam Back responds to John McAfee by saying, Satoshi staying anonymous is a Bitcoin feature. If I had logs which narrowed the anonymity set towards Satoshi's identity, I would delete or shred them. So here he is pretty much saying, I'm going to, you know, if I had information that could prove who Satoshi was, I would delete and shred it. Interesting. In the book Atlas Shrugged, the book that John Galt is a character in, a mysterious figure called John Galt is persuading other business leaders to abandon their companies and disappear as a strike of productive individuals against the looters. The novel ends with the strikers planning to build a new capitalist society based on Galt's philosophy of reason and individualism. Okay, again, here you see that connection between John Galt and Satoshi Nakamoto. The connection between the idea in Atlas Shrugged and Bitcoin itself, okay? So here are my conclusions about the theory. I think that Adam Back, inspired by reading Atlas Shrugged, subconsciously created the narrative association between himself and John Galt. So I think that Adam Back realized, I agree with a lot of the stuff that John Galt says or thinks or believes, and I want to idealize, I want to sort of embody in my life those ideals. Um, which is not too far of a stretch. People do this all the time. Upset with the current system and say the things, he creates Bitcoin using his previous hash cash code, which is built into Bitcoin, right? And uses his coding experience from that hash cash, you know, proof of work system to create Bitcoin, possibly with help from others. Uh, but anonymously, right, on the suspect list. Or maybe not anonymously. Maybe those people know for sure that Adam Back is Satoshi Nakamoto. Um, let's say that he sends the project info to Wei Dai and himself to cover his track. So the first, after Bitcoin's created, uh, they say the first two people that it was sent to were Wei Dai and Adam Back, okay? So Dr. Adam Back could have sent the project to Wei Dai and himself as a way to initially cover his tracks. Another supporting piece of evidence for this is the fact that once receiving it, it's reported that he wasn't that interested in it originally. When it was sent to him, he tried to figure out what is the point of this or what is the value in this. But if that's true, it seems kind of interesting that he would send it to him. You know, I think he sent it to himself and then pretended not to be interested at first and then allowed himself to become interested later as another way to cover his tracks. And then Craig Wright comes out and says, I'm Satoshi Nakamoto. But that threatens this John Galt narrative, causing Adam Back to respond vocally to multiple people in defense of the importance of Satoshi Nakamoto's privacy on Twitter. He's responding to people, right? Um, you know, there's talk about court cases going to happen but that are going to happen between him and Craig Wright. So, you know, it kind of, again, starts to play into this whole story where Adam Back creates Bitcoin because he wants to become his own John Galt character. He wants to become Satoshi Nakamoto, who's not just a person, it's an idea, right? It's a philosophy behind a name. And the reason he doesn't want people to figure this out, figure out the identity, is because once there's an identity behind the name, then it's not a philosophy anymore, it's a person. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I know that was like a crazy video, weird stuff, uh, strange investigation, just a theory. So, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please rate, comment, and subscribe if you have not already. Comment your own theories down below. Tell me if you think I'm wrong. Tell me if you think I'm right. Tell me your own theory. I'd love to hear other people's research and opinions. And uh, again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace, guys.